We're just going to focus on one suit for now, and you can extrapolate from there how to create the other four suits. When you're designing a deck of playing cards or anything more complex like, uh, like this, it's helpful to just take a look at your assets and see what you have already available. In this case, I've got uh, art for the Ace of Spades, the Jack, the King, the Queen. And I've also got the other four suits. If you have uh, images that have a lot of detail, uh, like photos or say something complex like this, go with a TIFF uh, as your uh, as your asset. For anything that's an icon, uh, you'll probably want to go with something uh, that is a vector EPS like this. So that's enough about assets. So what I'm doing is uh, going straight to InDesign uh, and basically designing one card. Uh, I do this sometimes with a complex card uh, just so I can get everything in the place that I want it so I can get a sense of what this card is actually going to look like. Uh, then I can go to the spreadsheet later on and actually start placing uh, the variables in the spreadsheet. So all I'm doing is basically just dragging from my uh, finder window over to InDesign. You could go the old-fashioned route and uh, go to uh, File, Place, and you'll just have to uh, pull in an image from your support folder. But uh, I find this just so much easier. In particular, if I, if I need to switch out a, uh, an icon, for example, I can just drag one file over to the other and it'll automatically replace it. So uh, we have these two assets. Uh, they're set right now. Uh, the display performance is set at typical. I like to set mine at high quality display if the card is very simple because it's going to load fast anyway. And I like to see how things are actually going to render when they're finally done. Uh, once again, I'm uh, hitting W to uh, remove all the guides uh, so I can get a better sense of what this is going to look like in its final form. I am aligning the artwork uh, in the center here. Uh, what I'm designing right now is just the Ace of Spades, or the I guess the Ace of Clubs. Uh, let me grab the uh, Spades icon. Here we go. Now, a standard deck of playing cards will usually just have the icon in the two corners on, on the top left and the top right so that you can rotate it in either direction and fan it in that one direction. Uh, but you can just as easily uh, have suits on every corner. Now we've got a card with suits, uh, but we also need a place for the rank. So let's make a text frame. Now say I want to make these ranks very, very big, and I want to center it underneath the suit. Now already you can see this is kind of unusual just because I've got the rank above the suit and all that, but it's not a big deal. We're just kind of winging it a little bit, put a happy little rank over here, very Bob Ross of us. Okay, so we have a very simple card already set up. We don't have uh, data merge set up yet. Uh, this is all, all these images, all these links are actually on this page now. Uh, you can see in the links palette also that we have spades linked four times and we have this image linked once. Uh, so with all that in place, now we can actually go to the spreadsheet and get a better sense of what each of these things uh, will look like when it actually goes on the page and how they'll change. Back to the spreadsheet. Uh, remember, if you're going to have a variable image, you want to put the at sign first, and then let's call this suit. And for the uh, central image, we're going to put at sign image. And then for the rank, we don't need to put an at sign because it's not a variable image, so we'll just put rank. Going back to our support folder, I want to make sure I've got the right name for this, so copying and pasting the file name spade.eps, pasting it over here, great. Now there are 13 cards in each suit. Uh, so I'm just copying and pasting this so that it appears uh, 13 times. I'm gonna freeze this uh, top row to make sure that it's distinct from the rest of the rows. Ace, then two, three, queen, and king. So now we know which card is going to be our ace. So uh, let's grab the file name for that image, spade-ace.tiff, put that here. No images are going to appear in the center of the card for uh, for two through 10. So we can just get, we can uh, just leave those blank. It's not gonna hurt anything. Then we grab spade-jack.tiff, uh, spade, uh, place that here. Grab spade queen dot tiff and grab spade king dot tiff. Then we go to file, download the CSV. When you download your CSV, remember to keep it in the same folder as your your assets that the CSV is going to call on when you data merge it in InDesign. So I'm going to download this spreadsheet into the same folder as the uh, as the artwork and, and all those suits. 
Now we go back to the data merge palette. We select data source. Here's that CSV that we just downloaded. And you'll see that uh, we have items in the panel for suit, for image, and rank. And once again, you can tell that uh, which variables are text variables and which are variables are image variables because uh, there's a different icon on the art variable and there's a, a little T on the text variable. But uh, right now, none of these variables are actually applied anywhere in the, uh, in the card. So first, uh, let's start with the suit. So I'm selecting the icon. I am also going to click on uh, the suit item in the data merge panel. Now it looks like it's just disappeared, but what it's actually done is replace the image with uh, a variable for uh, for the suit. And you can tell that this has happened if you go to view, extras, and show frame edges. And there you can see very tiny in uh, the image frame is the variable that's called suit. Uh, I don't usually work with uh, Im with frame edges turned on just because it, it creates a very messy uh, interface and I find it hard to, to uh, work around it. So uh, if you need to, you can turn that on just to see what variables are applied to different uh, image frames. But for me, I just turn them off and I just go to hide frame edges. Uh, one, one thing uh, to show here, I accidentally clicked the image that's inside the image frame. And unfortunately, uh, for some reason, Data Merge just doesn't recognize that. You have to actually click the uh, frame, have the frame selected when you click on uh, the variable. So now looking again at uh, the frame edges, we can see that the suit has been uh, placed in each of these four frame edges. Now let's do the rank. I'm selecting the, uh, the rank that we just typed in. I'm going to click on rank in the data merge panel. And you'll see that uh, there is a, a little icon here that represents overset text. That, that is, uh, there is more text than can fit into this text frame. As we learned in the previous lesson, that's because the, the actual text variable is way, way longer than what we would actually type for a uh, rank. Uh, just know that the variable is in place if you need to confirm it. You can also see it in the data merge panel. And lastly, uh, I'm selecting the central uh, image frame and applying the image variable to that. And you can see at the top of this uh, frame uh, is the variable image. Now, uh, looking at this in without preview, it looks like this card is blank. But in fact, it's full of these uh, image frames and text frames that, uh, that have different variables applied to them. Here's how it would look once we actually preview. It looks just like how we laid it out, which is good. Now let's see what the next page looks like. Again, I'm just previewing here. This is all still a one page document, as you can see. The only thing that's changing is that we're previewing each uh, what InDesign calls a record. This is the two of spades, three of spades, four of spades, five of spades, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, what's this? Ah, we have some overset text. The 10 is uh, wider than we anticipated. So let's uh, increase the width of this text block. This is why I go through a entire deck uh, in preview before I start doing a merge document, just in case there's weird stuff like this. Uh, in this case, I'm going to select both these, or rather all of these text frames. I'm going to change the uh, point size of the text to be uh, 30 points. And I'm going to go back to uh, card nine just to see how that looks. I like it, so I'm going to move on to page 10. Now we have the jack, and you can see that the uh, variable that we've applied to this card is still holding up. It's calling on the jack artwork that we designated in the spreadsheet, the queen and the king. So all that makes sense, I hope. Uh, let's try something a little different. Now you could do some uh, weird stuff here now that you've got this basic template set up. Say for example, you wanted to have a deck of cards that had two suits. It's very simple to do. Go back to the spreadsheet. Let's name this suit one, add a column, insert one right. Let's call the second suit, suit2. Again, putting the at sign there because this is going to be an image. Grab the file name for your heart icon. I'm going to copy and paste that. And let's say you wanted to make the face cards uh, diamonds. And these can be any icons you want, obviously, but uh, let's just go with double suited uh, playing cards for now. Now, uh, we don't have a placeholder for this variable, so we have to go back to our InDesign document and find a place to put that. Uh, for now, let's just assume that it's going to be right next to our primary suit. And I'm going to turn off preview, going to back, go back to the spreadsheet, save a CSV, saving over the old CSV, back to InDesign, updating the CSV in the links palette. And you can see that now uh, there are two variables here that were not there before, uh, suit one and suit two. And Unfortunately, the variables that we've got set up for these icons just, just say suit. 
So you're gonna run into, run into some problems. So now that I'm trying to preview it, uh, I get an error here. There's at least one data placeholder that cannot be found in the data source. Make sure all the placeholders correspond to fields in the data source. Basically, that means that all of these uh, image frames are calling for suit and there is no field named suit in the uh, spreadsheet. So we need to select all of these and replace them with suit one. So you gotta do it one at a time. Now, uh, we've got all of our variables applied. Let's see how this looks in preview. The ace is a spade and a heart. Two is spade and a heart. Three is spade and a heart. Four is spade and a heart. Five is nothing. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Oh, and boom, we get some new stuff here. Uh, we get the diamonds. When you're designing a card game, a lot of times you're gonna be focused on balance and you're gonna be spending a lot of time looking at your spreadsheet, making sure that uh, say powers are distributed evenly across a deck or that certain attributes are, are distributed. Uh, if not evenly, then predictably across an entire deck. So you'll be uh, looking at different ways to divide up uh, uh, different items across uh, across an entire deck, and you're going to be reorganizing this list quite a bit. So hope that makes sense. Uh, this is just a quick lesson. Uh, we're going to go next to something a little bit more complex. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, and support the rest of this series on Patreon.